Hey Facebook, Jason here. So excited to have you all on the live stream this evening. Tonight we're going to be talking about what to expect on your private pilot check ride. We're not only going to talk about what to expect on your private pilot check ride, but I'm going to work and do my best to take you through a mock check ride as well and share with you some of those actual FAA check ride questions. We have a great evening planned and really we're just going to work and do our best to get you prepped for that private pilot check ride so you go into it feeling great and go into it realizing that this check ride is really just a formality. It's really just your first flight with a passenger. It happens to be a designated pilot examiner, but it all works out all the same. That's what we're going to talk about this evening. Let's dive into it as well, get some formalities out of the way so we're all on the same page. I realize some of you may not know who I am, so I'll give you just a quick little uh, about me uh, overview here. So. Um, I was named AOPA's Outstanding Flight Instructor now three years in a row, 2014, 2015, 2016. Nearly 10,000 hours of dual given and every month, uh, 1,200 pilots per month, we help them with their written, their knowledge tests and their check rides, just like we're going to help you all with this evening. We're up to three courses now in our private pilot, or our, in our online ground school, private, instrument, commercial pilot, online ground schools, helping you with your written, with your check ride prep, and most importantly, making you that safe real world pilot. Up to, you see six of them here, now we're up to eight books. I'm actually giving away all eight of our books as a bonus as well. I'll be sharing with you more at the end of this Facebook live stream on how we can make that happen as well. So you can get those if you're a current online ground school member of ours, you can get access to those as well. So a little bit about myself, about what we do, kind of the 30 second summary. Let's dive into some content before we do that, how this works this evening. First off, I'm going to do a presentation just very quickly on really what to expect on that private pilot check right now. You all can ask your questions at any time. Whenever you see me looking this way, it's because I'm looking over these questions. So, hey, Clay, hey, Waylon, hey, Nathan, hey, Tony, good to see you all. Andrew, Matt, Russ, George, Mark with a C, Daryl, Rodney, Timothy, Dennis, Michael, another Michael, Leroy. Awesome, awesome. Raphael, Bora, good to see you guys. Kendall, Brian, good to see you guys. So. Not only can I see those, but Matt, who's sitting over here, can see those. My wife, Ashley, who's sitting back at home with Ella, can see those. Billy's on here. Hunter's on here. Larry's on here. Tom's on here. They're all watching this, so they can chime in if you have questions. By the way, it's Billy's birthday, so wish uh, Billy a happy birthday with that. So as well, too, when you... You know, I'm saying something that you like. You can press these little thumbs going across the screen. You can give it a like, give it a heart, whatever it may be. You can send those across the screen to give some affirmation as it's kind of like a virtual applause, we'll call it, uh, as to see what we're saying too. Also, I'm going to be giving away some great prizes. Matt, I forgot to tell you about this part. It's important. Um, I'll pick a winner. Whoever gets the question right or third answer uh, that's correct, right, you know, I'm going to send you an M0A.com t-shirt. So I don't think Stacy's on, so Matt will need to take down those names and, and follow up with that as well. So we'll be giving away uh, some great t-shirts as well. So when somebody wins something, be sure to give them some likes, give them some hearts to show them that you're uh, congratulating them for winning that t-shirt when we get to the mock check ride portion. Now, how the mock check ride works is I'm going to be asking actual FAA check ride questions. I'll ask the question. I'll do my best to be quiet, which my wife will tell you is tough sometimes. I'll be quiet, let you guys think about it. You'll type in your best answers, and then we'll go on and go through it there. So you all be, uh, be there. And again, if you're, if you're in this chat here, you're eligible to win. We'll just give away some m0a.com t-shirts uh, this evening. So let's dive into it. Let's chat about what to expect on that private pilot check ride. By a show of everyone on here, you can just type in me. You can throw up some likes, some hearts. It doesn't matter. Who here has a private pilot check ride coming up? Just so I kind of know who's in the audience and everything else. I know a lot of you. I see Brian Ross. I see a lot of others here who I know have some check rides done already. They're just living out that good pot is always learning mantra. I imagine there's a lot of you. But how many of you here? I see a lot coming through here. How many of you have a, a private pilot check ride coming up? 
Now, out of those, how many of you still need to get the knowledge test, the written test done? So, some things to think about there. We'll talk about that a little bit. I see Michael, uh, Patrick, Shane. Uh, awesome. John says Sunday. Dustin says coming up. Um, Austin, uh, oh, Daryl's coming up. Awesome. To be announced, says Zach. Uh, Lauren says written as well. We got, I always call the private pilot written test the monkey on your back sometimes, right? So we just need to get it done. It, it holds us back from getting that check ride done so often, doesn't it? So I see a few written that need to get done. Hey, Dave, good to see you. Uh, Tristan, glad you got the written done. So I now I got a gauge of who we're chatting with tonight. So this is going to be a fun night. We're going to have uh, a great opportunity to share some awesome knowledge with with you all. So let's dive into, since we're dealing with people coming from all walks of life in aviation, let's, let me start with the basics, then we'll kind of work up to the more advanced and then into the mock check ride. I won't take but 30 or 45 minutes of your evening. So let's dive into it. First, I'm sure we understand that the check ride is broken up into two parts. There is the oral examination or the verbal examination where we're sitting down, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the check ride examiner. This is the part that kind of scares everybody the most is we're sitting down one-on-one -on -one, and this is where they ask the questions. And who knows what they're going to ask. They could ask anything, right? Well, that's what I'm going to prepare you for tonight with that mock check ride. Because the questions do have a rhyme and a reason, especially now with the new ACS, which we'll talk about. But it starts with, really, even before the oral exam, it starts with, do I have the paperwork done? Do I meet the requirements to even apply to take this test? We're going to talk more about that paperwork in a moment. From there, assuming all that's good, we go out, we do the flying portion where you are to act as PIC the entire time. I always say that a check ride is, especially in the private pilot arena, is really just your first flight with a passenger. If you look at it that way, it kind of like, okay, this, this guy or gal is really just, they're, they're my first passenger that we're going flying with. So think about that. Now, there's three possible outcomes on a check ride. An approval, that's what we're all shooting for. A disapproval, that's what I'd prefer not to see. And then a discontinuance. The three possible outcomes. Let's talk about a discontinuance here. A discontinuance could be, hey, we can get the oral portion of the check ride done, but the weather's not so great. So we get issued a discontinuance, meaning that, all right, this part of the check ride is satisfactory. We're done, but we're not able to continue because of weather or because of maintenance. There's nothing wrong with getting a discontinuance. It means we're going to continue this check ride at a later date and we'll pick up where we left off. Discontinuance is fine. Approval is what we're going for. Disapproval, I don't think we have to explain that one. We kind of understand where we're coming from with that. Now, I want to work you into what I refer to as our check ride checklist. And if you are a note taker, write this down. If screenshots are better for you, take some screenshots of this because I want to make sure you check all these boxes before you go into that check ride. You talk to any check ride examiner, they will tell you that most of their applicants, they send away empty handed. They don't even start the test because they're missing this one hour in their logbook or this one piece of paperwork or something they're missing and they're not even ready to take the test. They're ready up here mentally and skill wise flying the airplane, but they're missing just a little bit of, you know, 0.5 here, whatever it may be. So we want to make sure we cover all those bases. So it starts really with our logbook on the check ride checklist. Are all the requirements met? Do you meet the experience requirements for day, for night, for hood time, for cross countries, for solo time? There's so many different avenues there, right? What about all your endorsements? Do you have all the needed endorsements for solo, for your knowledge test? A common one instructors forget is that TSA security endorsement. They forget that one a lot. And then do your hours add up correctly? It's like a balance sheet. Everything has to, what's on the balance sheet and what's in the bank account have to match, right? So hours add up correctly is do the hours add up column through column, do they add up correctly? For example, you're, if you're a student pilot, 
Your solo time and your PIC time should be the same until after you become a private pilot. That'll start to vary, but initially those numbers should match. And there's some numbers that just need to be met, that need to match. Make sure everything gets carried over properly from page to page. You, you have to keep that logbook so neat. And I don't care if you do it electronically, paper, it doesn't matter. It has to be done right, though. And, and two, an electronic logbook is a great option. Most examiners are fine with you coming in with an electronic logbook nowadays. It's just, it's the sign of the times that's coming. So everyone's okay with that. Let's talk about some items now you need to have current and in your hand. Current sectional charts. Okay, I know we're moving to a digital cockpit. You can have paper sectional charts. You can have digital sectional charts as well on ForeFlight, on your iPad, whatever you choose to use, but they have to be current charts. The fastest way to fail a check ride is to show up with expired charts. Right off the bat, you're saying, hey, I really just, I didn't put a whole lot of effort into this. It's kind of what you're saying, unfortunately. Show up, make sure it's current. A current U.S. chart supplement, formerly called an AFD, Airport Facilities Directory. Make sure that is current. Current FAR, and we just switched to 2017. There's no excuse. You can get it digitally right now and have it on there, on your iPad, on your tablet. Your written test. Bring the actual, you know, the official written test with you. You're going to plug it all into IACR and it's going to be done, and you're probably done with that piece of paper. But please bring it with you on your check ride just in case there's a malfunction, or I've been in on check rides where IACRA, the system they use, which we'll talk about in the next slide, goes down or the internet goes down. We have to do it the old school way, which is pen and paper on an 8710 to do all the paperwork. You're going to be thankful you brought that written test because they need that knowledge test ID code from it as well. And then what about a current ACS? Remember, we just switched from PTS to ACS. They are going to expect you to not only know what the standard you're being held to, ACS, of course, Airman Certification Standards. I once heard an examiner say, it is the, the worst you could do and still pass the check ride. It's like getting a 70% on the written, right? These are the basics. You have to at least be able to do it to this standard. We want you up here, but you got to at least be this or greater, right? Is what we're striving for. They want you to have a copy of what you're being tested on so you know, so you can look stuff up. This is what people don't realize about a check ride, especially your first, the private pilot check ride. Oftentimes, you don't realize is you are able to look some things up. Now, you're not able to sit there and go every question and go, okay, I, you know, let me look that up. Next question. Oh, let me look that up. You can't continue to do it over and over. But what you can do is you say, hey, Mr. or Ms. Examiner, you know, um, I... I I used to know that. I got a lot of knowledge in my head right now, but most importantly, I know where to find it. You see, when you can be resourceful and don't try to make up an answer or anything like that or dig yourself into what I call a check ride pitfall, which is where you volunteer more information than you actually should, right? If you know how to look it up, if you know how to use the resources you have, like the FAR aim, like the U.S. Chart Supplement, on your charts, on your past your private pilot check ride book, whatever it may be, if you have the resources and can show that, listen, I know I don't know everything, and I can admit to that, but I know where to find the answers, and I'm willing to find the answers, you can do that one, two, maybe three times on a check ride. That's really about it. You get a few get-out-of-jail-free cards like that, right? They want to see you being resourceful. So we have current in hand, all those sectional charts, all those items as well here. Next thing here is IACRA complete. IACRA is what I was just explaining to you. It is that digital paperwork. We used to do a thing called an 8710 form. We'd fill out by hand or type and print out and mail it actually in to Oklahoma City where everything really got done with the FAA and they'd send your certificate back. Now it's all done electronically through IACRA. IACRA is great and because it speeds up the paperwork process. You get a certificate much faster than you used to and everything else. However, it is very complex if you've never done it. I've helped hundreds of students and, and, and other individuals prepare forms and applications for IACRA. And I still stumble sometimes picking out the aircraft types and some other things in there. This is something your flight instructor should do. I am blown away. And we deal with over 3,000 support tickets a month through M0A.com. It is through live chat, phone support, email support, everything. 
And I'm always amazed that sometimes it's an online ground school member, sometimes it's an individual who's not even a customer of ours. We try to help everybody. They say, Jason, listen, my check ride is tomorrow, and I need to get IACRA done. And here I am thinking, like, your check ride's tomorrow. You need to either be studying or just relaxing and taking a mental break and preparing for the check ride. That way, you don't need to be fussing with dealing with a government website trying to get your information in there. Your flight instructor should do IACRA for you. A great flight instructor does IACRA for you. It's a pain. Now, you can be there with them and follow along, but if you know your check ride's coming up, like for those of you who said you've got a check ride Sunday or whatever it may be coming up, like, Hopefully IACRA is done already, unless you plan on squeezing in a flight. Like obviously after your last flight before the check ride, IACRA needs to be done because you're not gonna add any more hours. So sometimes it is the night before, but I spent many late nights as the flight instructor doing IACRA forms for my, C for my students so they could get a good night's sleep before their check ride. And that's just a sacrifice a flight instructor should make. So please encourage your flight instructors to do your IACRA forms for you. If they want to charge you for it, that's fine. Trust me, it is a headache. Pay them 20 bucks to do it. They should do it for free because they're good CFIs, but either way, let them do it. I can't say that enough, and you don't realize it until you really experience it. Let's talk now about what an ACS checkride is like, and then we're going to dive into the actual mock checkride portion. We'll quiz you guys, and then we'll go ahead, and uh, we'll give away some great prizes and everything else here. So... What is an ACS checker? First off, what is the ACS? ACS is Airman Certification Standards. We used to have the PTS, Practical Test Standards. We've now switched from that, right? So those of you who are going out and taking your check rides here soon, well, listen, you're gonna be taking ACS check rides. And what's really changed? Well, big picture stuff has changed like slow flight. Those of you, especially those of you who are coming up like in the coming months to take a check ride, you need to, before the check ride even starts, ask the examiner. This is so important, I can't say this enough. Please ask the examiner, what version of slow flight would you like to see? I, I kid you not, because there are some examiners, I know we're supposed to be standardized and everything else, but some examiners, and you probably have been taught both ways, right? We're slow flight, where we take it and we're hanging the airplane by the nose, the stall warren horns on, and we're holding the airplane there at its minimum controllable airspeed. And now new ACS slow flight says, actually, you will fail the check ride if the stall warning horn comes on. Talk about two totally different things, right? Please march into your check ride and say, hey, I have a question before we start. Which slow flight do you want to see? PTS slow flight or ACS slow flight? I can show you both, but just let me know what you want to see. I don't want to fail because of a stupid miscommunication. I thought you wanted slow flight this way, so I brought the stall warning horn on. You wanted it the other way, and you failed me because of it. I'm, I'm very, very serious. Every student who's gone for a checker, I've told them that right now. So please make sure you do that. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, you say, Jason, I've always done slow flight by hanging it by the stall warning horn, and just you know, we're just a moment away from a stall, we're holding it right there. You need to have a serious talk with your flight instructor and say, hey, listen, I know there's new slow flight out there. Can you show it to me real quick? It's very easy. I mean, literally, just lower the nose a bit and don't allow the stall warn horn to come on. Hold it at 80 instead of 65. It's, it's safer. It's easier. We can explain why they want that and other things later on. It's not the scope of this Facebook Live tonight. But please make sure you know how to do slow flight in both circumstances, PTS and ACS. That goes for clean, dirty, slow flight, flaps up, flaps down type stuff. So please make sure you understand that um, as well. That's really the big thing that's changed with ACS. Now, the other big change is everything is very scenario-based. And I like to say that good and great CFIs and DPEs, designated pilot examiners, the individuals administering your check rides, have been doing ACS check rides for years. An ACS check ride is simply just more scenario-based. With the PTS, we had special emphasis items, which said, hey, Bill, tell me about wire strike avoidance. Or, hey, Joe, tell me about runway incursions. Now, and you would just tell them that because it's a special emphasis area. Rather now, a question would be, hey, Joe, give me three ways you work in the cockpit to prevent runway incursions. 
and you would list those out and go, oh, well, I always write down and read back. And if I don't understand what they're saying, I'm not afraid to ask for clarification. And I always have my taxiway diagram out on my knee board. I'm always, when I get my clearance, I look at the taxiway diagram. I have four flights, so I just highlight it and I draw where I'm going and I follow with that. I also have a G1000, so I'll zoom in and just list the things you do. It's much more scenario based rather than tell me about runway incursions. It's give me some real world ways you're working every day to prevent real uh, runway incursions. Do you see how it is? It's it's same kind of questions. We're just changing the phraseology a little bit and getting you know more articulate answers from you, the applicants, to really they just want to hear your thought process. This, by the way, the uh, this idea of talking out loud while you're flying. Designated pilot examiners love it. And the cockpits can be very quiet because, and I've been to DPE school in Oklahoma City. So, and they tell you like, you have to sit there as a check ride examiner, just be quiet. Let the students work through it. We're told not to help, not to teach, and which goes against everything I want to do. I want to help you, I want to teach you. You're told to sit there and be quiet. So when your check ride examiner is just sitting there passively in the cockpit, them not talking is actually a good thing. Because if they're talking, that means they're going to have to like take, they think they're going to take the controls, whatever it may be. Them being quiet's a good thing. They want to hear your thought process though. So when you're doing steep turns, talk to them. Okay, I'm going to do my clearing turns first. I'm looking, I'm checking here, I'm checking there. Hey, would you mind checking out your side and, and using them as that passenger, right? Because they're effectively your first passenger. So working through that, running through your ideas out loud. Confessing mistakes, hey, oh, I've got a little bit of a sink rate going on right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of power to fix that and maybe take out just a degree or two of bank. The reason I was sinking is because I was overbanking just a little bit. Catching your mistakes. Check right examiners love to see this. They want to see that thought process. Don't be afraid to think out loud if that's your style. And oftentimes I find it works when you think out loud because you catch yourself sometimes making mistakes or a possible mistake when you, once you hear it back as well. So just important things to think about with that. Let's now dive into the portion you all have been waiting for, which is the mock check ride. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you five actual FAA check ride questions. All of these check ride questions came from those checkers. Literally, I was sitting in the back of the room or in the corner of the room when the exam was taking place. And I write down every question. That's how we came up with our book, Pass Your Private Pilot Check Ride. Every question in this book was asked on an actual FAA check ride. By the way, this book will be yours and our ground school members free tonight. I'll share with you how at the end of this. So do stay tuned till the end here. But these questions are from the book. They're from actual FAA check rides. You're going to notice they're very scenario based as well because we're geared more towards the ACS. So I'll ask the questions and I'm going to give away um, for uh, the most correct answer. First correct answer will determine for each one uh, how we're going to uh, give away some t-shirts. Uh, for some correct answers as well. So I'm going to give away a t-shirt to my first correct answer on question number one. Question number one has two parts. So don't give me one part and then type it up. I want it as one so I can actually see it because there's 300 something people on here you see. So I need as one, both answers in one response. So let's go ahead. Let's do question number one. In aft CG, is it Faster or slower for cruise speed? More stable or less stable? You can just give me the word. You can give me faster, slower, more stable, less stable. But that's one thing. And I'm going to sit down here while you guys type some answers in here. Faster or slower, more stable or less stable is an aft CG. Let's see, Matt, if you could go back to my very first answer. If you could, actually, I can scroll. Sorry, Matt, you keep doing what you're doing here. Um, let me see. So these are the most recent ones. Let me come on down here. So they're coming in. Let's see. And it won't always be the first person. Don't worry. There's going to be plenty of opportunities here. Um, John Sanford. Congratulations, John. You're our first winner here. Matt, can you make just like a running list so Stacy knows who to check off and confirm? Uh, John, email Stacy. 
Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y, at M0A.com. The spelled out version like you see in the lower third there, M0A.com like that. Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y, at M0A.com. Shipping info, T-shirt size, and she'll get that out to you, and then Matt will confirm all that. The answer, by the way, that John put in there so perfectly, and the Fast Typer Award, too. The answer, an FCG allows for a faster cruise, but is a far less stable aircraft. Now, let me, let me expand on this. Yes, it is faster. But when I say faster, I'm talking a knot. To, in general aviation, it's a knot, two knots, maybe three knots. And the reason is, I, they're not going to get into this on a private pot check, right? But the answer is why? Because it requires less tail down force is the answer. The big thing is it is far less stable. Why is it less stable? It all comes down to leverage. You see, CG is the center of gravity of where the aircraft would balance. I like to do an example here holding up a pen. So I'm going to hold up my pen here, and the CG of this pen, right, where everything wants to balance, I found the CG of the pen. Now let's pretend the top of this pen here is my rudder. If I were to enter into a spin, right, my ailerons aren't doing much, I use my rudder to recover. My, the arm, when you hear the term arm with weight and balance, is the distance from the center of gravity, in this case, back to the tail, the rudder. It's all about leverage. So that rudder pivots around this point like you see there, you follow me? It pivots around that point. I have leverage. It's like why the door handle is away from the door hinges. It's easier to open the door. I grab the wrench at the back to give myself leverage. When I have an aft CG, when I move that CG back here, closer to my fictitious rudder over here, right? When I move that CG back here, look how short my arm is, the distance from the CG to the rudder in this case. It is much less effective. I have to swing the airplane so much more to get the same amount of force applied. It's like I just took the door handle on my door and put it in the middle of the door. It's or closer to the hinges, let's say. It's much harder to open that door when the door handle is right next to the hinges. I have less leverage, thus making my rudder less effective, right? Which makes me less stable. If I have an aft CG and enter into a spin scenario, well, I'm in trouble because the one device that I have to bail me out of that, which is my rudder, is not effective. It's or not as effective as it could be if I had a forward CG. So when loading an airplane, I'm always, I, and you have to be the bad guy sometimes. Sometimes the bigger guys and, and the, the heavier baggage, it has to go up front. Maybe you have a friend that's been dying to fly with you and it's two guys and, and you know, one's 200 pounds, one's 150 pounds. Well, you need the heavier person to sit up front. I want a more forward CG. Just how it is. I rarely use the baggage compartment unless we're really going somewhere. And even so, most stuff sits on the back seat. And the baggage compartment is just the lightweight stuff that goes back there. I want the weight more forward because of stability. So rant on that. Let's look at the next question now here together. Again, this question has two parts. I want two reasons, and I need them both in the... Uh, in the same, same comment so I can see it. Um, this one, I'm going to give it to the, this is a tough one, but I'm going to give it to the third correct answer here, okay? So y'all hit enter at the same time and it'll just, it'll kind of work out how it works out anyways, but third correct answer is going to win an m0a.com t-shirt. Give me two reasons why a pilot must file a flight plan. Why must you file a flight plan. There's more than, more than two reasons, uh, but this is why you must file a flight plan. Not, I said it's a good idea or anything like that, why you must file a flight plan. And remember, I know we're doing a private pilot check ride here, but they're gonna ask some questions beyond the scope a little bit. That's kind of giving you a little bit of a hint there as well. I'll be quiet for a second, let you guys get some questions in there. <laughs> Let's see here. One, two. 
Uh, my third correct answer is Luke Waters. Luke, congratulations on that. You're spot on. I see a lot of great answers, too. I mean, a lot of correct answers. Uh, Luke is my, uh, my correct answer there. So, uh, Matt, if you want to go ahead and uh, get Luke's name down so we have that. Congratulations, Luke, on that. Nice work. Um, two reasons why we must file a flight plan. Notice I didn't say VFR flight plan, right? Be very careful, kind of like the written test, how they word these questions. Answer. How about crossing over the ADAs, international flying? You want to fly internationally, you have to be on a flight plan. A DVFR flight plan, if you want to be VFR and do it, I saw some of those. Um, or an IFR flight plan. To fly internationally, you have to be on that. We can talk about ICAO flight plans later. I have some videos coming out on that when that's public, uh, more public than it is uh, as well. And then when weather conditions require it, an IFR flight plan, I know we are going, and we're, this is a private pilot, what to expect in your private pilot checkride webinar. But they're going to ask you basic things like this, so make sure you understand that, listen, when the weather's bad, you got to be IFR. That's what they're really after uh, with that one here. All right, let's see, how do I want to do this uh, this next question here. I think this is going to be a tough one. So I'm just going to give this one to the first correct answer. Because I think this is going to be a tough question uh, for, for, for you guys. This, is, this came up on a recent checkride too. Uh, actually, the last check ride, private pilot checkride I did with a student, ACS checkride, this was on his checkride. Question number three, you ready for it? First correct answer. Question number three, you're flying and a circuit breaker pops. How many times can you reset it, and how long should you wait before you reset it? How many times can you reset a popped circuit breaker, and how long should you wait before you actually reset it is the question. Like I said, this is a tough one. Some of you, if this came up in your check ride, you'd be like, well, uh, you know, I... I I don't know, you know, you'd be, where do I find this in a book? Where, and this is what I always say, that the difference between what happens in a book, you won't find types of questions like this in a book. You'll find it in our online crown school because it's real world. And that's what I mean. What happens in a book and what happens in the real world are two different things. The reason this came up is this examiner was actually uh, a part of a, uh, um, he was a court expert in, a, in an accident that happened because of this. The gentleman a very unfortunate situation. Circuit breaker popped, kept popping, they kept resetting, kept popping, they kept resetting, just over and over and over. Finally, they decided they were tired of the circuit breaker popping because they needed that GPS or whatever, that radio, whatever it was to use. They taped the circuit breaker down. What do you think happened after that? Well, circuit breakers pop for a reason, right? In-flight fire started and that's how our NTSB report started as well. And our check credit examiner we use, he was one of the uh, experts you know, uh, for that court case when that came, came up. And that's why he was sharing that with us. Okay, you're flying a circuit breaker pops. How many times can you reset it? How long should you wait before you reset it? Matt, did, did we have a, thank you for scrolling for me, Matt. Did you see, uh, uh, take it back to the beginning, Matt, and I'll go from there. Um, yeah, I can scroll from here. Let's see. Um, Roger, you're close. Um... Ooh, this is why I said, um, oh, here we go, Mike Ham. Mike, congratulations, you're the winner of the M0A.com t-shirt. I love what he said here, once, if it's required for safety, and wait one minute. That's exactly the answer, once, and wait one minute. Uh, beautiful, Mike Awesome, awesome answer there. I love the, how he worded that, Mike. That's perfect on a check ride. So he said, listen, once, if I need it, like if it's required for safety, like is it my primary GPS and I'm in IFR conditions and I need that thing, right? If it's COM2 and that circuit breaker pops for COM2 and COM1's working fine, I don't need COM2. I'm just going to let that thing sit out. Circuit breakers pop for a reason, right? there's something wrong. So just know that. By the way, our winners, again, email Stacy, Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y, 
at m0a.com, like you see in the corner of your screen right there. Stacy at m0a.com, tell you want a t-shirt tonight, give her your mailing address and your shirt size as well. We're going to get those shirts sent out to you first thing tomorrow when she comes in. So, and then Matt will be cross-checking that list as well. Let's see here, question number four. Um, a sort of easy one, if you're familiar with this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the fifth correct answer. That way the fastest typers don't just always win. Even though that last one you saw, I had to, I had to dig uh, quite a ways here to find that first correct answer. So question number four, fifth correct answer gets it. Are you ready? You're on takeoff, passing through 1,000 feet and approaching a few birds. What should you do? Very scenario-based type question. You're on takeoff, you're passing through a thousand feet, you're approaching a few birds, what should you do in this case? I'll let some answers come on in here. Hmm. All right, I'm going to start counting now. Uh, one correct. I'm counting just correct, not just any answers. I'm counting five correct answers. So, so no one can kind of wait and then press enter here. One, two. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey, Jim, good to see you. Jim, I like that. Sully was a good movie. Um, three, hey, Louise, good to see you. Hey, Mike, good to see you for uh, Dustin Sweet. You, my friend, are getting an M0A.com t-shirt. Again, email Stacy on that. You guys are right on that one. Birds naturally have a tendency to dive. So the answer is this. If able, get above them. Obviously, in a perfect world, you're able to get above them. But birds, when they're frightened, their natural instinct is to dive away from danger. Diving is their fastest way to get out of there, to pick up airspeed, to get away from that situation. Birds have a tendency to dive. I'm not saying they're going to dive every single time. I'm just telling you, their natural tendency when frightened is to dive. So if I'm at 1,000 feet and I'm climbing on out and I see birds in front of me, my goal is to climb above them. It depends. I mean, obviously, there's so many situations. It could be a climbing right turn, a climbing left turn to avoid it. It's been so bad at the Ocala Airport lately. There's just been these, these vultures that have just been circling, and it's, you can't, I mean, they're, they're that, you know, that cyclone of vultures. You can't climb away from it. So there's, I understand there's situations. But typically, what a check right examiner would be looking for in this type of question is understand that birds have a tendency to dive. I want to get up and away from them. So uh, congratulations uh, to our winner on that one. Again, do uh, email Stacy on that one. Fifth, final question, last chance to win an M0A.com t-shirt, at least until Thursday. I'll do this again for my instrument guys and gals as well. So if you're up to doing an instrument pilot mock check ride, be ready for that uh, as well. This one. Oh, if you're an online ground school member, please, I know you're going to get this one right because I have, I feel like I use this question every mock check ride. And by the way, Every, uh, the last Monday of every month with our online ground school members, we do live mock check rides just like this. And I do a webinar every Monday night with our online ground school members, just teaching on various topics. We did one on basic med last or yesterday. Um, mock check rides coming up where I ask questions. So it's a, it's a fun opportunity. John put it up there, groundschoolacademy.com if you need help with that. But anyways, this question, geez, uh, Luis and the guys and gals all tell you that this question probably comes up every other month. It's just, it's such a popular question because it deals with spatial disorientation and loss of control. I'm anticipating a lot of correct answers. I'm going to take, for the sake of, in case there's any slow internet connections out there, I'm going to take the 10th correct answer because there's going to be a few correct answers here. The 10th correct answer wins an M0A.com t-shirt. Here is the question. What is the first instrument you look at when recovering from spatial disorientation? Imagine you are under the foggles right now, and you're, either you are doing it or your instructor is. Spatial disorientation is setting in. You're flying, they're flying. It doesn't matter how they actually simulate it. They tell you recover. 
what is the very first instrument you're going to actually look at? And it may not be what you're thinking of uh, here <laughs> as well. Jim, I like that answer a lot. Let's see here. Hmm, let me scroll on down. I said 10, right? Let me scroll on down. Um, Roger says, where are the big prizes coming? And next, 7159 Quebec is... Ashley would be really mad, wouldn't she? Um, all right, let's see here. Um, looking for my correct answers. First instrument... First and I might maybe ten was too many. Okay, let me scroll back through here. I don't see a correct answer yet. Online ground school members, dive in there because I know you guys know this. Uh, everyone's waiting for ten, is what it, <laughs> what it really is, man. Everyone's going. I'm not hitting it until he hits it. Okay, I'm not seeing a correct answer. Maybe we can't give away a T-shirt then. Every, maybe ten was too many, man. Everyone's just says I'm waiting until until I see like seven, then I'm pushing enter here. This is, a, this is a stalemate. We can live stream all night. This isn't costing us anything here. So we can do this all night here. Everyone says waiting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate that. John's over here running the cameras, typing in correct answers. Jeez. All right. Put some stuff in here. All right. I'm going to go. Um, I'm just going to start. I'm going to wait here. I'm going to be paid. I'm not. I'm. All right. Everybody, if you have your answer in there, just press enter. And I'm just going to pick one then since we're all holding out. Um, this is like a, you know, game of Texas Hold'em or, or a really intense game of Go Fish or something like that, I feel like. Or John, you're just going to win the t-shirt. John, do you need any more mzoe.com t-shirts or anything like that? You have to do less laundry? Um, no? I, you need to go back and guys need to look at John's comment. John's, oh, yeah, John's my only correct comment here. That is crazy. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't, Tom, Tom, you, Tom works for us. Tom, I can't give you a t-shirt either. This is fun. This is, this is great. This is great. I can't give any other Shepherds one either. But that's three. We're getting closer. We're getting closer here. I'm just waiting for someone that I don't know to put a correct answer in. I'll give him a t-shirt. I'm a real easy going guy. I mean, jeez. Hmm. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Thank you, Ron Frank. Please give that man two t-shirts, Matt. Ron, two t-shirts, a blue one and a gray one. Write that one down. Stacy at mzeroy.com. Email her. I'm just giving it to Ron because there was too much of a stalemate there. We'd be live streaming all night if that was the case. Ron Frank, you're my correct answer. The answer is the airspeed indicator. There's some mad faces here. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> People are mad at me because I didn't wait all the way to 10. Ron, throw some happy faces in there to offset the mad faces. Let me explain why. This is fun. Let me explain why it's the airspeed indicator here first, okay? There's two things that can go wrong, right? I'm either way too slow and I'm going to risk stalling the airplane. Oh, I'm too slow. My nose is up. I need to lower that nose and give it some power here and recover from that situation, or I'm too fast and I'm going to test the structural integrity of my airplane. And that's really how it, how it works with that. So the first place I look is my airspeed indicator. Why don't I look at my attitude indicator here first? Why not my attitude indicator first? Because an attitude indicator is said to only be reliable up to really 59 degrees beyond that at 60 degree mark it has a tendency to tumble do i have i have an attitude indicator here as a matter of fact an attitude indicator is a gyroscopic instrument okay thank you john so this just to visualize this this one's kind of falling apart but my my artificial horizon will be here this is the actual bar that moves right here that you can see uh, a little bit if I can move it, there we go, the actual bar that moves. So this gyroscope here really works just like a top. And it's doing everything it can to stay level here 
as you can see. Now, beyond 60 degrees, this top, and what does a top do when it's on a table? You put the top on a table, it's going to work to stay upright. Even when I put it on this table, it's going to do its best to stay upright, even though the table is changing, right? But eventually, it's going to tumble. And when it tumbles, it's no longer giving you the correct indication. You could put the airplane in a dangerous attitude that is incorrect. So you can cross check with the attitude indicator, but do realize that it has a tendency to tumble beyond 60 degrees. So you need to be ready for that as well. Airspeed indicator is where we start with everything. So make sure we understand that. There's two things that go wrong. I'm too slow, I need to lower the nose and give it some power. I'm too fast, I need to bring power back and then slowly bring the nose up. Then cross-reference my other instruments from there. Okay? All good stuff. So, uh, listen, how did you guys do, by the way? Uh, how'd you do? Listen, if you got five out of five, you need to be feeling pretty good going into your check ride. You are certainly more than ready uh, for that check ride. So, uh, four out of five is not bad, three out of five, maybe we know some areas we need to work on now. That's what we're really here for. So listen, let us help you with your check ride prep. If this is something you're struggling with, we do mock check rides like this once a month. Any of our ground school members, Louise, all the guys and gals out there, uh, you know, will tell you the power of our online ground school. And all this month, we're giving away all eight of our books totally free for you as a bonus just for signing up. Pass your private pilot check ride. You see all the books there on your screen now. Um, plus our in-flight emergencies video course. You can download everything as eBooks or as video files so you have it there. Then you have access to the entire online ground school. Just go to groundschoolacademy.com just like you see there to get started. If you are a current online ground school member of ours, you need to log in and go to groundschoolacademy.com forward slash books, plural, B-O-O-K-S, to take action on that, start downloading all those books so you have them, because January 31st, that goes away. So make sure you have that. It's groundschoolacademy.com. You can see all the books listed out there, some of the benefits. We are a complete private instrument commercial pilot online ground school courses. We do weekly member only webinars. We have the crazy for our gold members. Pass your check ride or I'll pay for it guarantee. It's full written, full check ride prep, and most importantly, it's a flight training mentorship and community. You can sign up whenever you want. It's self-paced. You can start and stop whenever you want. If you want to hop in there for a month, by all means, do it. If you're close to a check ride and say, man, I just want to brush up on airspace and systems, by all means, do it. And then download all the great books as well so you have it. You can, we've had people, you know, the average person knocks it out in a month to two months to get through that course. So it's great stuff there for you guys. It's groundschoolacademy.com and you get all those books, yours for free as a bonus just for signing up uh, in, during the month of January. January 31st, we take that deal down. So we do this promotion uh, every time this year or every time uh, in January, you know, once a year we do this, I will not do a promotion like this again. So uh, do make sure you take advantage of that groundschoolacademy.com. That's for all membership levels from PIC all the way up to gold. So you have that there. Sign up for what's right for you and then work through it that way. So with that, let's open it up. Let's take some questions now and we can go through it there. Uh, any questions you have? Um, Yes, Jay. Our course is totally ACS. So new private pilot written, ACS check rides, everything is covered um, in there. So you have access to that. Our course, that's why it's online, because when something changes, we update it. When ICAO flight plans come out, we update it. When they got rid of world aeronautical charts, we changed that. Area forecast, we changed it. We're always, we're in the studio every day. People think I just fly everywhere every day. I don't. I spend most of my time here in the studio on this set you see behind me, updating videos for you all. And any of our online ground school members, uh, you can certainly chime in to, to share, you know, um, the experience that, that you've had uh, with it as well. So, um, Cool stuff with that. Thank you for all the, those who uh, enjoyed the seminar. Uh, Neil, yeah, I'll be back in Ireland. Neil, um, I'm coming back for the, um, uh, whatever the fly-in is, the beginning of July uh, is when I'll be back. So, uh, so plan, on, plan on that. So looking forward to seeing you out there. The same airport we flew out at, was it Weston? Uh, whatever the big fly-in they're doing out there in, in July. I'll be out there uh, again. 
And we're doing like London, I think Germany, and maybe Switzerland this year too for our European speaking tour as well. Um, so good, good stuff there. CFI Ground School will be coming soon, so don't you worry um, as well. Um, you can't use a PTS book. Uh, remember, everything is ACS. So some, whoever's asking, I saw someone asking about PTS. You have to be uh, doing uh, that. Hey, David, good to see you. David was on the aviation seminar at sea with us. Uh, do they require the E6B on the check right, even if you have other options such as electronic calculator? Um, if you have an electronic E6B, they'll be okay with it. Um, should you know how to use the manual E6B? Absolutely. Uh, but having the electronic one, the thing is, whatever tools you bring with you, you need to know how to use. So David, don't bring the electronic one just to, you know, have it. Make sure you know how to use it because they, they want to see that you can use it. I would prefer it's not on the iPad though because, you know, examiners could have a tendency to say, I don't want you to use your iPad today. I want you to see you do it manually. And you just want to have a backup. They're going to say, oh, your iPad battery died. What are you going to do now? Just want to always have a backup with that. So uh, um, things to uh, things to kind of think about here. I see some other people asking about that um, as well. Um, yeah, Ben, I kind of I like the manual E6B um, as well. Um, how long does our private pilot ground school take? Hector asked. It depends. Um, if you have a regular nine to five job, the average person does it in a month and a half, two months. So if you sign up for online ground school gold, plan on spending three hundred bucks. Um, and it, you can cancel, you can start and cancel at any time. Um, if you want to make it your life and commit to it, you could do it in a month if you really wanted to. Um, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> Chris, they're starting to do that now with the new ACS code. So they actually will make a bit of sense. Uh, so that'll be nice. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see here. Um, Valerie said, should I know about the special flight rules area process? Valerie, if you're in that area and near, near D.C. where the special flight rules area is, absolutely. I would know it forwards and backwards. Valerie, if you're in California, I wouldn't sweat it one bit. Uh, but if you're in, you know, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, you're, you're in that general area, Delaware, uh, you need to know the special flight rules area. But if you're out in somewhere else, I, you wouldn't sweat. You know it exists, yes. And but uh, other than that, um, you wouldn't need to, uh, to know it. Um, let me see here. Uh, Leroy, yes, thank you. Leroy, get in and get those bonuses too, my friend. Um, let's see. Um, Clay, is the flight plan portion still required to be on paper charts? So, Clay, yes and no. Um, I plan it both ways. So I will plan it out on paper charts, but I'll also have it on for flight or whatever I'm going to use. I like to plan it both ways because here's what they're going to do. If you show up with just your iPad, and I had a, had a, a check ride I sat in on, and the student did this, and, and like the air was taken out of the room when the examiner goes, oh, so you only plan it on for flight. You didn't do a paper one. And he's like, I don't really like that too much, but we'll see if we can work with it. And you saw the applicant just go white, like uh, this isn't a very good start. And he made do with it, but the, it was not getting off to a good start. They still want to see you plan it out both ways on the premise of if the iPad battery dies, what are you going to do? You need to always have that backup. And Clay, you and I talked about this at the Atlanta seminar too. You saw like technology is great, but technology can fail as well. We need to always have that contingency plan, that backup. You also need to be able to say that when they put their finger down on a number and say, how did you come to this number here? You need to be able to do that. So just something else to, uh, to think about here. Jaden, great point, bringing that backup battery. Uh, what should I be reading in the FARS for private pilots, says Ryan. So Ryan, if you're a customer of ours and you get that book, I have a book called The Far Aim in Plain English. It's everything you need to know for sport and private pilot uh, that's in there. So if you don't want to become a member, you can buy the book. It's only 20 bucks, I believe. Um, you can pick that up. If not, uh, at the very front of the FAR AIM, they list the regulations that are related to private pilot. It's the big 91 stuff that you need to really know. The 61 stuff is just what's required of you. Focus really on 91 and focus on the AIM and you'd be good. But obviously the FAR in plain English breaks down that legal speak of that regulation and then gives it to you, you know, in plain English uh, so you can actually understand it for you. Um, yeah, Ben, I, you're spot on. I said check right required him to know systems nose to nose to tail, uh, and he, he's right. 
Um, absolutely uh, correct. Uh, Leroy, thank you for the kind words on the farm in plain English. How long does the Pass My Check Ride take? Oh, Derek's asking about that, that course. Jeez, the Pass My Check Ride course can be done relatively quickly. That could be done in a, um, a long evening, a, a week, abbreviated weekend even. If you just want to go that route, just kind of touch up on some stuff, you can do that uh, there. Let's see. Um, Chris asked, do we have any affiliations with schools we offer our courses? Absolutely do. So we have a full CFI partner program. Uh, we deal with a lot of flight schools all around the country. Uh, we have a collegiate aviation program through National American University. All 37 of their campuses uh, use our ground school exclusively. So we're not just, uh, we sell direct to consumer like we're doing here tonight, but we have a lot of enterprise stuff that flight schools resell of ours, colleges resell of ours um, as well. So um, that's that. Uh, James, not this moment can you download the videos. You download the books, you can download some videos, but not the entire course. And the reason I have that is because the course is always changing so much. That's why it's online, but everything streams so easy. Everything's mobile friendly, uh, so you can do it on the iPad, do it on the phone. Even the quizzes, we made, we made the buttons big on the quizzes, so you hit A, B, or C much easier, just taking the quiz on your phone even uh, to do that. So uh, you have that. Uh, books are ebooks, Larry, so you have that. Um, Mark, the, the books that you'll download will be available to you afterwards, um, and some of the videos that you'll be able to download will be available to you afterwards, but the, the rest is subscription. Here's how the ground school works. It's subscription-based. Um, for one membership price, you get access to all the courses. You get private, you get instrument, and you get commercial. So maybe you're knocking out private and you want to go into instrument. Well, you're already paying for it. You have access to the instrument course as well. You might as well dive into that and knock that out as well. So it's not just we sell you one product. You, it's a membership because it's a community. It's always evolving. You get access to all those courses. That's just how we do it. So um, definitely uh, uh, different here. Oh, this will all be recorded. So for those of you who are having issues uh, and that sort of stuff, um, so, uh, absolutely. Uh, Steve, I thought of you today. We need to, uh, we need to chat via email so we can get that, uh, set up as well, my friend, and get that back on the calendar. Excited about that. So let's see, let's take a few more questions here, then we'll wrap this thing up. Congratulations to our t-shirt winners as well. Do make sure you email Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y at m 0 so she can get you those. And I'll take a, uh, a few more. Yeah, James, uh, James H., Email, uh, email my wife, Ashley, uh, A-S-H-L-E-Y at M0A.com, Ashley at M0A.com. Email Ashley and she'll be more than happy to get your flight school set up to do a resale. We, uh, we pay flight schools 30% of whatever, uh, whatever business you send us. So it's a great margin. You don't hold any product or any inventory since it's delivered electronically. It's yours, my friend. So uh, let's have that conversation. Email Ashley. She's in charge of all that. It can make that happen. Um, Neil, 3 a.m. in Ireland, and the man's on. I appreciate that, Neil. See you in July out when we come out to Ireland to do that seminar. We're excited about that. Um, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Um, great, great stuff. Um, let's see. I don't see. Um, Kendall, help me your videos. Train, help me. Awesome, Kendall. Congratulations. Uh, Mark, yeah, uh, I personally may or may not be at Sebring. The team will be uh, at Sebring. Uh, so the team will be out at the Sebring Expo with the Technum twin will be out there. Um, and I, if I am there, I'll be coming and going. I'll be there for a day and maybe and not there for a day. But the team, uh, Matt and Russ, will be out there as well. So uh, you can do, uh, do that. Yeah, Jaden, quizzes are saved. So you can go back and look and see how you did, review incorrect answers. Hector, it's a monthly subscription with that. Um, Let's see, I don't see anything else, but uh, thanks for jumping on, guys. If you want to do some instrument pilot stuff, Thursday at 9 p.m., I'm doing the same thing live, uh, but geared towards instrument pilot and talking what's coming with instrument ACS, which is still something that's in the works. So we'll be covering that as well, then doing a mock check ride for instrument as well. So um, that'll be cool. This recording, for those of you who came in late, literally, as soon as I sign off, as soon as the stream cuts, Facebook will process this, and it'll be on our Facebook timeline, just like that. So I wouldn't say, but it'll, it's, it processes as we record. So I would say we're two, three minutes away from having a recording for you as well. Yes, I'll be up at EAA Oshkosh. Uh, thank you, Ben. Someone asked about Naples. I have a Florida tour coming up as well, so that'll be, I'll be posting that public as well. We have a real big speaking tour after April coming up uh, that I'll be, uh, I'll be posting for you guys. So um, 
So that'll be great. But listen, guys, thanks so much for taking time. I know it is late for a lot of you. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy nights to just learn more and better yourself as pilots. We, uh, you're really living out that good pilot is always learning mantra, and we just truly appreciate it so much. Do check out the URL below this, groundschoolacademy.com, to learn more and just put your trust in us for your written test prep, for your check ride prep, and most importantly, for making you that safe real world pilot. We just, uh, you are such a blessing to us and allow us to be now a blessing to you. So listen, enjoy the rest of your evening. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. See ya.